In this video, we'll be talking about Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a lymphoid malignancy characterized by the presence of reed steinberg cell. So this has distinguishable uh, histopathological appearance. So the reed steinberg cells are very important in this context. We would learn what they are, how they arise, and how they are different from other cells. But as this is a lymphoma, it would obviously involve the lymph node. So Hodgkin's lymphoma is quite rare. It only uh, comprises 10% of the total lymph uh, lymphoma cases, much rarer than the non-Hodgkin lymphoma. It has a bimodal age onset. So basically the young adults like 15 to 35 age and age greater than 55 are two uh, peaks where this kind of lymphoma can be seen. Anyway, there are two types of lymphoma. Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin. I have a different video on non-Hodgkin lymphoma, which is more common. But Hodgkin lymphoma is characterized by reed steinberg cells, whereas majority of the non-Hodgkin lymphoma uh, generally can have malignancies of the B and the T cell lineage. So what are reed steinberg cell? Before that, let me tell you that Hodgkin's, Hodgkin lymphoma is less severe compared to non-Hodgkin. The specific etiology is unclear, but it could be multifactorial. One of the factors is Epstein-Barr virus infection. Also, there could be genetic predisposition which can play a role. In this video, we can appreciate that. Also, immunodeficiency states such as HIV, AIDS, etc. can increase the risk. Anyway, this particular lymphoma is kind of trackable and predictable. So the, space is, the spread of this lymphoma is contiguous. Basically, one lymph node is getting affected, then it can spread from one to another. So the pathology, the, the lymph adenopathy is basically a common pathological symptom underlying this uh, lymphoma. And it's localized, it is painless. So basically, Hodgkin lymphoma spreads in an orderly fashion. That means it's kind of predictive. You can see it has an order of spread. It is very different from the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, whose uh, uh, basically uh, spreading pattern is less predictable. So since it's more predictable, prognosis is better, treatment planning is better, good sign, right? So reed steinberg cell is the key histopathological feature underlying the, underlying the Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it's a distinctive giant tumor cell. It has bilobed nucleus, with two nuclei and you can see they are positive for several markers such as basically CD15, CD30, etc. So they suggest that it has a B cell origin and this particular uh, appearance is known as the owl eye appearance. You can see the two big eyes uh, are resembling the two big nucleus. So what are these Ritz-Steinberg cells? They are some sort of altered mutated B cells, right? Now let's talk about more. So basically, we have to understand reed steinberg cell in details because reed steinberg cell can interact with other cell types such as T cells, B cells, dendritic cells, and overall they can create the complexity. Okay, in the vast majority of the Hodgkin's lymphoma, neoplastic reed steinberg cells are derived from the germinal center. So if you look at this particular lymph node, you can see these uh, circular structures at the germinal centers, the lymph follicles. So basically in the lymph follicle, there are central part, which is the germinal center and reed steinberg cells can be found there. So let us zoom into this particular region to understand better. But before that, let's try to understand the normal B cell development to appreciate what goes wrong. B cell development starts from the bone marrow with hematopoietic stem cells. It leads, it gives rise to lymphoid and myeloid progenitor. B cells are derived from lymphoid progenitors and it exits the bone marrow as an immature naive B cell, which enters the lymph node eventually. Inside the lymph node, the follicles, the lymph follicles are the residing zone for the B cells. Now, if you zoom in, you can see even in that follicle, there are distinctive layers, the germinal center, the mantle zone, the marginal zone. Now, basically in this case, the B cells are getting um, activated with the help of T cells. So once a T cell is activating a B cell, activate, activated B cell re-enter the cell cycle and they proliferate rapidly. They increase in number. And in this time, a somatic hypermutation event is happening in them. So some B cell have low affinity receptors, some would have high affinity receptors. The low affinity receptors containing B cells would eventually undergo apoptosis. The B cells who, ha who has high affinity would actually 
form the plasma cell so this is the basic outlook steps in this entire process goes wrong anyway these uh, these uh, activated b cells which has high affinity receptor would undergo a process called class switching which produce different type of antibodies other than membrane bound igm anyway in case of uh, hodgkin's lymphoma the maturation process and the apoptosis process both goes wrong so what we are in, end up with is basically lot of activated b cells which rapidly proliferate they are not dying they are not even becoming plasma cells so they are non functional altered in function and they eventually form these giant reed steinberg cells so if we compare a normal b cell with a reed steinberg cell they have basic similarities but also dissimilarities so vdj recombination which is essential for b cell receptor has undergone in both the cell type somatic hypermutation happened in both the cell type but what distinguishes reed steinberg cell is several b cell specific gene are not anymore expressed at the same level they have down regulated many of these b cell specific genes okay it has been shown that nf kappa beta activation is one of the classical cause of hodgkin's lymphoma it can be activated due to a, as a consequence of a epstein barr virus infection and uh, basically there are latent membrane uh, protein 1 lmp1 found in reed steinberg cells which are characteristics of these activation also loss of an inhibitor of nf kappa nf kappa beta can lead to an sustained activation of nf kappa beta so loss of function mutations in i kappa beta and many other possible uh, inhibitors can lead to overdrive of nf kappa beta signaling when nf kappa beta signaling is overdriven it lead to extensive proliferation and lead to this sort of hodgkin's lymphoma development now it's important to note that hodgkin's lymphoma cells can or, or the reed steinberg cells can interact with plethora of immune cell type it can interact with mono, uh, monocytes macrophages and lead to their activations it can suppress the inflammatory th1 cell type or cd eight positive uh, cytotoxic killer cells instead it promotes the activity of th2 subtype it also activates the t regulatory cell so t regulatory cell would over uh, overly reduce the inflammation and re reduce the response of th1 cell so it would make sure the tumor is safe anyway enhanced t regulatory cell response is a bad sign when it comes to tumor development so it also interacts with other blood cell types like eosinophil with the help of interleukin 5 or also cd30 cd30 ligand it interacts with dendritic cells so it can interact with plethora of the immune cells to modulate the immune response let us talk about the who classification of hodgkin's lymphoma it is classified into five subclasses nodular sclerosis lympho lymphocyte rich mixed cellularity lymphocyte depleted and lymphocyte predominant as types so the first four types are known as classical hodgkin's lymphoma the last one is the non canonical one all of these four one has some version of the reed steinberg cell the last one also have reed steinberg cell but the characteristics is pretty different so when we talk about nodular sclerosis this is the most common of the hodgkin's lymphoma occurs about 70 to 80% of the total cases it has distinct histological features large nodules with uh, within the affected lymph node it is surrounded by fibrous tissues reed steinberg cells are typically present in these nodules and you can see that typical owl's eye appearance is pretty much common for nodular sclerosis then there is mixed cellularity this is bit rare constitute about 20 to 25% of the cases so involved lymph nodes are affected by heterogeneous cellular infiltrate such as t cells eosinophils plasma cells and macrophages now we understood that these all cell types which infiltrate the lymph node can actually interact with the reed steinberg cell so anyway um it it, it is associated with epstein barr virus infection and it is 70% of the cases are associated with ebv infection it's more common in males compared to the nodular sclerosis which can happen in both the sexes now next talk let's talk about uh, the basically other subtypes so other subtypes includes lymphocyte depletion so lymphocyte depletion has uh 
occurrence associated with the EBV infection, most of the cases, more than 90%. So the, it is predominantly and strongly correlated with EBV in, in, interaction, EBV association. The immunophenotype of the Reed-Steinberg cell is kind of identical to the other type of Hodgkin's lymphoma. So lymphocyte predominant type is rare but different. Anyway, it is involving several nodules inside the lymph node. You can see the characteristic histological appearance. The classical Reed-Steinberg cells are not uh, visible here, difficult to find. Eosinophil and plasma cells are absent. Reed-Steinberg cells also show B cell markers which are typical to germ center. Remember they have some similarity but they are down regulating the B cell markers. In this case, the Reed-Steinberg cells are very different. That's why it's non-canonical. So it is positive for CD20, BCL6, but negative for CD15 and 30. So when it comes to spread of the Hodgkin's lymphoma, it's stereotypic spread. It starts, it starts as a nodal disease, then it affects the spleen, then it affects the uh, liver, eventually the bone marrow. So there are different stages. Stage 1, which is localized in one lymph node region. Stage 2, two lymph node regions or more in lymph node regions are affected. Stage 3, two or more lymph node regions are affected, but they are on the different side of the diaphragm. Then 4 is widespread disease where the spleen, liver, bone marrow is affected. So obviously, better prognosis means better chance of survival. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy are the treatment options. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.